Welcome back everyone. Now we are ready to talk about the economic policies. We already have talked about the economic indicators, the theories that try to explain the business cycle, and now we're going to talk about the role of the government in influencing the economy and trying to achieve economic objectives. And the government has actually two wings to fly through in the econo economic skies, if you may say. We have the monetary policy and we have fiscal policy. In order to talk about the monetary policy and to understand it, we have to understand what do we mean by money from economic perspective. So welcome to our new chapter talking about money. What do you mean by money? In this chapter, we're going to talk about the evolvement of money. How did the money develop into the modern shape that we see in our world today? And we're going to talk about the definition and functions of money. And we will end up talking about the deposit institutions, banks. How does it operate in the economy? How does it affect the economy? And what is its role into creating money? So let's start. In this unit, we're going to talk about the story of money. The story of money started with a partner system where people exchange goods and services against each other. So I give you banana, you give me an apple, you give me some apple, I give you some strawberry, etc. This system was suitable for humans as the number of goods and services was very limited. However, as the number and the variety of goods and services increased, people realized that they're going to need more sophisticated way of making transactions. There was a lot of trials to use different types of goods as money like kettle and some metal like bronze. However, it ended up with gold. Gold was actually what the humanity use as mood of as a medium of transaction for a long time what about the paper money the paper money actually that we that in our hands now actually goes started in china so the chinese governments were the first governments to issue the paper money marco polo transferred this experience from china to the rest of Europe. It wasn't before the 14th century when some shape of paper money appeared. At this century, the traders start settling their debts with promissory note, which is a paper that would say that I'm as a trader obliged to pay this guy, the holder of this receipt, the amount of gold that is mentioned there. Governments actually started intervening into this market as there was a chaos that happening in there and the first start of what we call the gold standard or the gold rule started in 1844 when the British Central Bank monopolized issuing the paper money under and he put himself under a const uh, one constraint one very important constraint that it will only issue paper money if there is a gold backing it. So now the situation is like this. The government will issue paper money because it's easy to carry and it's easy to put to, to move from one hand to another. It doesn't have the problems or the complications of the heavy gold golden coins and they guarantee that if you presented this banknote, I'm going to give you the equivalent of gold that it represents. If you can see over here, this is a photo of an old Egyptian pound. And you can see written in here that I guarantee to pay back at demand the sum of one Egyptian pound for the carrier of this bond. What do you mean by one pound, one Egyptian pound? This is an Egyptian pound. No, we are talking about one golden Egyptian pound. And this is the essence of the gold standard. 
where the central banks will issue banknotes that's backed 100% with gold. The story kept like this until the Great Depression 1929. In the 30s, governments started abandoning the gold. <coughs> In the 30s, the government started abandoning the gold rules and the world need a no a new monetary system which actually will born in 1944 under what we called the new system was called the britain wood system before the end of world war ii there was a meeting in the states in new hampshire states in a hotel called britain woods about 50 countries were there one of them was egypt to decide about the monetary, the new monetary system of the world. This new initiative was actually engineered by both Harry Dexter, representing for the states, and our favorite economist, John Maynard Keynes. The, the meeting proceeds, decides that the dollar, the American dollar, will be in the center of the new monetary system. So, the states in order to maintain the new monetary system guarantees that it will actually guarantee paying one uh, auction of gold against every 35 dollar and the other current currencies is to fixate its prices against the dollar so where did this power come from how can states guarantee such a massive job to actually transfer anyone with dollars into gold because actually during World War II about 60% of the gold has transferred to the states and the states was the factory of the world by then it was actually manufacturing for all the fighting armies so 60% of the gold reserve was transferred to the states and this actually enabled the state to guarantee the new system where the dollar is in the center of the system and for each $35 the states will pay will will exchange to a one ounce of gold and this is why the American dollar in nowadays we are in 2021 is the international currency However, this also, the Britain Woods system also didn't last for, for, for long. By the end of the 60s and the early beginning of the 70s, there was a pressure over the gold and there was speculation over the dollar that leads a dollar price to go down against the gold, which actually pushed the states to abandon the Britain Woods system under a big umbrella of economic decisions that's called the Nixon chuck by 1976 the whole system of britain woods was abandoned and there is no golden cover for our currencies of today our author here is giving us is telling us this nice analogy has taken us that the difference between the monopoly paper and the dollar paper is no more than our belief that one of them has a value and the other doesn't have a value so here we know a very important thing about our modern money that it gets its value from general acceptance and nothing more our general belief that this paper with this specification has a value is what gives it value nothing more no more gold backing paper money so let's talk about the definition the modern the definition of modern money so money is any commodity or a token that generally accepted as a mean of payment so in our class we can create a currency if we all agree that this currency will settle transaction bet between us, this will make it money. So what are the functions of the money? 
Money actually is used as a medium of exchange, unit of account, and a store of value. When we talk about medium of exchange, it means that we use it to transact or to pay for goods and services. What about if we don't have money? If we don't have money, this means that we will end up with a porter system, meaning goods against goods. <coughs> we will end up with a porter system and this will make our life much, much harder. So what about unit of account? It's, it's an easy way to make pricing. It's an easy way to make pricing of goods and services. And the third function is it is used as a store of value where I can transfer value from one point of time to another point in the future. So money has three functions, medium of exchange, unit of account, and store of value. If we are to define the money in our days, it is currency that we are holding in our wallets, in our homes, in our hands, and deposits at the banks and deposits in institutions. What do you mean by deposits in institutions? They are institutions that receive deposits and make loans. So how do we measure money? Actually, we have two measures for money, the narrow measure and the broad measure. When we are talking about the narrow measure, we're talking about M1, which consists of money outside banks, travel checks, and checking deposits owned by individuals and businesses. So currency outside the banks, we're talking about money that's circulating into the economy, the money that we use for our daily transactions. When we talk about travel checks, the, uh, it is actually an old arrangement that the, some of the financial institutions will, uh, will issue some kind of paper money or paper settlement tools that actually accepted as money. And checking deposits are actually deposits that you can receive a checkbook over it. Now, what about the M2? M2 actually in includes all the M1 three components plus time deposits, saving deposits, and money market mutual fund along with other deposits. So we can see here the components, the different components of money in the States in the year 2014. And we can see the M1 with its three components. If we add the rest of the components, we will reach the M2. Now we know about the definition of money, the M1 and the M2. There is another terminology that's related to money, which is liquidity, which is the property of being instantly convertible into a mean of payment with little loss of value. So the easiest is it is to turn the asset into money with no loss. And in a shorter time, the more liquid is this assets. So if we're talking about car, apartment, bank deposit and stock, which one is the most liquid? You will see that the most liquid is bank deposit. It is the easiest to be turned into money and with no loss. If we're talking about checking deposits, of course. In the second place comes stock. It's easy to turn it into money as you can sell it into the stock market. In the third place comes car and the fourth place comes apartment. This will give you a hint of what we mean by liquidity. So the easiest it is to turn the asset into cash and the fastest it is to turn it into cash. This is what we call it liquidity. Another thing that we have to take in consideration that checkable deposits are money. However, checkbooks and checks themselves are not money. Credit cards are not money. The deposits behind the credit cards are the money. Now at this unit, we know what is the definition of money, what are the functions of money, what do you mean by liquidity? Now we are ready to, be, to know more about deposit institutions and its role in the economy. So to the next unit.